So good morning everybody and welcome back to another film. So just an initial backstory to how this morning has gone. I found myself a nice, quite large patch of ancient woodland not far from where I live. It's actually where I'm standing right now talking to you. I arrived, let me just see what time it is. The time is half past nine. I actually got here at half past seven, um, just as the sun was coming up and I made my way to the nearest point where I could see that the best access would be. Spoke to a nice chap um, at his little house who, who kindly let me drive, uh, sorry, sorry, kindly let me park on his, uh, on his driveway and pointed me in the direction of the woodland and said that if I saw anybody to mention his name. But um, what happened is that I, I followed his, his route and got down to what was an old hall and uh, you have never seen so much stuff in all your life. There is literally tyres and farm machinery, you name it, everything probably going back a hundred years is strewn all over the place. Um, probably the wildlife is enjoying it, loads and loads of nooks and crannies for them to hide in and breed in and nest in and all the other things that they do. But um, as I walked through it, I was quite unnerved. It didn't feel right somehow. It felt um, quite um, unwelcoming, let's say. So I went back to the house and um, couldn't find anybody there and uh, decided to have a right good look at the maps and um, there's certainly a footpath leading through that property so I took the bit in the mouth and decided to just go for it and get through it as quickly as possible which is where I am now. So I've got down, come through the fields, past a couple of friendly horses and um, just came down the hillside here and over this little bridge behind me and I have to say I don't think anybody hardly ever comes down here. All the paths um, are in pretty poor condition, the stiles and the footbridge looks like they're about to fall down any minute so I've certainly got this place to myself. The footpath carries on straight in front of me up here and I'm hoping it just doesn't come out into another field and that's it because looking at um, the woodland heads in that direction and also in that direction this footpath tends to cross through through a central strip through a narrow strip and I'm hoping I can still get into the other parts of it. Where I am here it's a real tangle and because it's so unused it may well be pretty inaccessible. But good mix of trees, we've got elder just above me, oh sorry alder just above me, we've got um, and there's oak and there's actually aspen just there and we've got um, elm and we've got sycamore and also hazel just there so a right nice mix of different species of trees and with a good mix of species of trees comes good ground flora and uh, and all the other nice things that that we enjoy to photograph as nature photographers so i'll get my bag now that i've managed to cross the rickety bridge and uh, head up that way and see what uh, see what i can find So I've just climbed out of the river valley section and my fears have not come to fruition. I did think, as I said, that this would peter out into just fields, but um, I'm pleased to report that it hasn't. And uh, I've come to the top of the woodland here and I can see that there's nice flat areas just behind me there. And um, certainly um, a slope, more of a slope, gentle slope in woodland in front of me in that direction. I did get a little bit worried coming up the hill because if you've seen in some of my earlier videos you'll you'll know that I've said um, that when you get lots of sycamore in woodland you generally find that the ground flora including the fungi all tend to be fewer and far between but um, 
as I've got to the top here that, that sycamore patch has petered out um, we've got areas of birch woodland just here and it's really nice and open and um, all sorts of things in the canopy even beach so I'm quite excited about this the sun's now come out and it's um, some lovely backlighting just over my shoulder there so I think I'm going to probably spend the rest of the morning in this small patch just here and uh, hopefully we'll um, we'll find somewhere that's going to be well worth coming back to and uh, this is often what it's like um, with photography you've just got to find your own little places and then just work them um, for as long as you can really yeah quite excited about this little spot now I keep hearing things um, like, like sticks cracking in the distance and I'm wondering if there's deer maybe about I did see one in the field as I was walking to the the old hall back there but uh, equally I could be here with other people but uh, I've certainly not seen anybody yet yeah there's just something something moving just over in that direction Exciting, exciting stuff. Well, wherever you are in my part of the world, you can always hear some form of um, sounds of man, whether it be an aeroplane or farm traffic or roads, but um, this particular wood is lovely in silence, even though I can hear those things in the distance. But I was just standing here, bearing in mind that we're now heading full steam ahead into autumn. And just occasionally, you can hear all around the woodland leaves falling from, from the trees. And as they, as they tumble down, they hit the branches. And you can hear this clicking, clacking as they fall down and then they hit the ground. And apart from the odd blue tit foraging in the canopy and the odd blackbird or robin or wren common species that's all there is to hear you probably can't hear them it's very very faint but it's all around me the sound of autumn leaves really quite beautiful Now I did say that this woodland was classed as ancient woodland and I reckon we found one of the characters right here. This is a silver birch and I reckon this can be classed as a veteran tree which generally speaking for certain species is over 150 years old. Now the way you measure veteran trees is at a height of 1.5 meters you measure the girth all the way around and generally speaking it's usually about three meters to be classed as a veteran but there are exceptions to that rule and uh, birch is one of them now birch is at two meters at the girth to be classed as veteran i'm about 1.7 meters tree hugging time so i reckon this tree easily qualifies as a veteran what a beautiful thing so i think i've found a potential scene not a macro for a change this is going to be slightly bigger broader more encompassing uh, scene woodland scene so i'm going to put this camera down now put it roughly in the composition and then just talk you through what it was that I saw as I walked down this path behind me. Some of you might already be able to see that so I'm not going to 
go to the right there and include the brightness I'm going to crop the side of the tree off and that's roughly where the composition is so the idea is is that this tree here forms the anchor point on the on the right hand side of the image and the way that the trunk comes down and scoops round at the bottom there it blends in with the natural contours of the landscape behind it you've got a, a dip and then a rise so it comes down the tree and then it dips and it rises and it goes off there to the left hand side the key features of this is this here which is an elm a witch elm this one here which is also an elm and this is a hawthorn at the back and from there they all look like a single tree and when the light comes in from the right hand side it catches the trunks now it's going to be critical not to have too much lighting because I don't want the hot spots but just gentle lighting on these you've got this tree here at the back which is uh, a beach yep a beach and the light catches the right hand side of that trunk but again the perspective makes it look like these two trees this one here also a beach almost together so these two trees the way that they fork create create a nice feature on the right hand side and of course you've got the sweep of the bank ending at this one here which is an elm so I think that's quite a nice a nice scene I'm not 100% sure that today's the right day to do it but it's nice to practice piecing the compositional jigsaw together I'll get the camera out line it up and take a quick shot of that I think there's potential there and it makes a change for the video for the channel to do something other than macro I feel like we've been doing a lot of that of late and whilst I, I'll probably go on, go on to do a bit more of that today if I find anything this just it's nice to just break it up with something of a broader scene so get the camera out right we're all ready to go I'm just waiting for some softer light uh, there we go there's the scene there's the camera now I just wanted to mention when I set the camera up just now um, I noticed that the ISO was on 3200 when I put my camera away I generally don't turn it off I just bung it straight in the bag and just leave it to auto shut down that's a mistake um, that, that if you're not mindful of uh, next time you come to get the camera out you could be faced with the situation whereby you spend the whole day shooting at 3200 and ruining a whole series of images so always 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 check your ISO before you start I've wound it back down to uh, 100 because I'm on a tripod and I've also got really still conditions so 100 is perfect the light is improving now as we speak uh, I just wanted to quickly mention um, the aperture setting I've gone for f16 I did wonder with this whether I need to focus stack that sycamore over on the right hand side there is quite close to the camera in relation to the background trees I've done a test shot focusing on that tree and, uh, and, and reviewed the footage um, the image and I can see that the back ones are sufficiently sharp enough they're, they're, quite, they're close enough to the camera not to have fallen outside that zone of focus, focus that f16 gives so I'm going to wait here a few minutes and choose my moment carefully and, uh, and take the shot when the light's just right what I will say is that because I've not got the atmosphere today for this scene I'm probably going to add just a bit of a vignette um, around the outside just to, just to help you focus on that visual journey through, through the trees there with a, with a much more atmospheric day or morning uh, with a, a bit of fog or mist or whatever I think 
I probably wouldn't have needed that but because the conditions aren't ideal I'm just going to give the, the image a little bit of a push in post processing just so you get the idea of, of what, what it could potentially look like on the right day. So I'll put that on now. So, carefully into place, I found some Mycena type species fungus here growing on this, this dead log and a number of you of late have been asking about focus stacking and how I do it so I'm going to try and attempt to show you how I do it in the field. I was drawn to these because it's a lovely group, you've got three small mushrooms and then a taller one on the left hand side. Now, it's alright for the purpose of this demonstration but Ordinarily, I would be looking for uh, a group in better condition. These have got little bits missing at the top. So I've moved the camera as far around to the left hand side as possible to try and eliminate that so it's not too, um, too obvious in the final shot. So the first thing I do, I get the composition right first and foremost, and then I take a test shot at various apertures with the correct exposure. And to start with, I've gone for 5.6. And I focus on one of the one of the mushrooms and see what the background looks like at that aperture. If I go to it, I'll put that one on now quickly. If I go to let's say for example, if I go for F16 and take another, I'll put that on again. The background, as you can see, is far too distracting. If I go to 2.8, which I can do, you'll find that the overlaps for the stack aren't sufficient and you would have to take hundreds of pictures really close together to get the stack seamless. So you try to pick an aperture that gives you enough depth of field that the overlaps when you put the stack together match up, um, but not so much. So the background becomes a real distraction. Um, and on this occasion, 5.6 is about right now I'm not going to there's a bit of bark just in the foreground here I'm not going to include that within the stack I actually quite like the softening effect that that gives on this occasion I often don't like that and I, I decide um, on each particular circumstance whether I'm going to include it as sharp detail or softness but because of the low angle of the camera it actually introduced a bit of foreground softness which I quite like. I've got to be really careful every time I touch this log that tall one really shakes. So get the camera lined up like I say switch it on to um, switch it on to f5.6 in fact I'm going to go for f6.7 just to give me that little bit more of a safety net. Correct exposure 100 ISO which is about a quarter of a second. Now where I'm going to focus first of all is the very front edge of this mushroom down here, one of the little ones on the bottom lower left hand side. Move the focusing point on the LCD screen over to that, that particular one and focus on the front edge of the cap. 
you've got to be careful that the light remains consistent throughout this exercise and also that you don't knock the camera so the stitch is seamless so that's the first one taken now I'm looking at the subject and trying to decide how much I need to include so I think what I'm going to do is just for safety I'm going to go to the top of the taller of the, the mushrooms right to the top of the tip of the cap focus that in nice and sharp and take another one that's probably covered the whole of the mushroom but what I am going to do is I'm going to include the stems um, so if I go to the base of the stem sharpen that up take another one and that's really probably all it needs I might just uh, go to the top of the stems which essentially is the, the middle part of the big cap so I probably don't need it but I'm going to do it anyway so that's a whole series taken ready for stacking in Photoshop I'll probably make another little video about that at some point about how to lay them all together it's quite a simple process don't take very long at all but I'll put that image on now So I've found another bridge across the river, this one in slightly better condition than the last one I have to say, looks much safer, but I'm going to leave it there and uh, call it a day. So thank you all so much for watching as always, if you've enjoyed the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave some comments below, let me know what you think of today's shots. So until next time I will see you in the next one, bye for now.